Have you ever wanted to create real-time visuals that react to MIDI? That's exactly what we'll dive into today. When it comes to real-time graphics, you'll often hear about shaders. A shader is a lightweight program that runs on the GPU and tells it how to draw visuals, from colors and textures to lighting and special effects, all in real time. In VS, shaders are at the heart of turning sound and MIDI into dynamic reactive visuals. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to browse and load shaders, tweak their parameters, and build a simple scene from scratch. And as always, here's Nuno's avatar to guide you through the VS world, while the real Nuno is busy making VS even better. Let's jump in. Let's start by creating a new scene. Click the plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. Now we'll load a shader material. You can do this by right-clicking the layer thumbnail and selecting materials, or simply by double-clicking the thumbnail. This opens the material browser. On the left side, you'll see several categories of materials. For this tutorial, focus on the shaders category. Here you'll find the factory bank, plus any VS expansion packs that bundle shaders. Packs that don't include shaders won't be listed. If an entry is grayed out, it means you don't own it or the license isn't activated. At the top of the browser, there's a search bar you can use to quickly find materials across all categories. Type glowing, then select the glowing circle shader from the factory bank. Each shader material can have up to seven parameters shown in the layer parameters bar of the mixer panel. Try adjusting them and you'll see the material react instantly, changing its look and behavior in real time. If a parameter isn't available, it will appear as NA. Double-clicking any parameter will reset it to its default value. Each shader comes with its own set of parameters. While some shaders may share similar parameters, don't assume they will all behave the same way. Now let's make the glowing circle react to the notes played on a MIDI keyboard, changing its size with each note. First, switch the trigger mode to MIDI to enable polyphony. Next, assign a KBD modulation to the radius parameter of the material. To do this, Open the matrix, go to the second page, locate the KBD column, and connect it to the radius row. As you play, you'll see multiple circles appear, each with a different size based on the notes. Increase the EG1 release parameter to make the circles fade out more slowly. Now, let's add another shader to make the scene more interesting. Open the Material Browser on Layer 2, type Eternal into the search bar, and select the Eternal Gold shader from the factory bank. Start by changing the shader's color to red. Open the Color panel in the Layer Properties and adjust the color. Next, decrease the thickness and particle count, then slightly increase the spacing parameter. Lower the Alpha slider to make the shader more transparent. If we solo this layer and press a key, you'll notice the shader brightens. That happens because, as explained in the modulation tutorial, the alpha parameter is modulated by EG1 by default. Since we don't want that behavior here, let's clear the modulation. Open the matrix panel and double-click the alpha modulation cell to remove it. Now the shader will remain consistent when you play the keyboard. Finally, on solo layer 2 and play some notes to see the result in action. And that's it. In this tutorial, we explored how to browse and load the shader material, apply a simple modulation to a shader parameter and combine it with another shader to set a background mood. We kept things simple here without diving too deep into modulations, since that topic was already covered in detail in the previous tutorial. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure to check it out. It's one of the key techniques for bringing true audio and media activity to your visuals.
Thanks for following along, and I'll see you in the next VS tutorial.